Praise the Lord. Let's, let's make some noise for God right now. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He is worthy. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord that does marvelous things? Amen. You are good, God. You are good. Hallelujah. I'm thankful to be here tonight, and I'm thankful to be preaching to such a blessed church. God truly has his hand on this church, and I'm thankful to be a part of it. Amen. I see people binding together, and I see people coming into one accord, and I believe that we are on the precipice of something wonderful and great, the next level, if you will. Amen. And I love the Lord for that, amen? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And you can't have oneness without unity. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and grab our Bibles today. We're going to take our scripture from Romans 8 and 15 through 16. That's Romans 8 and 15 through 16. The Bible says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You may be seated. I'm so thankful for the Lord and everything that he's doing. You know, God has just been so good to me. And I'll tell you, you know, I don't deserve it, but he's an awesome God. We'll just go ahead and dig in here. By scripture, we know that after man was created out of the ground, the Lord made to grow every tree that was pleasant to the sight or to be desired for food. And the tree of life also in the center of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of or the difference between good and evil. Some people ask why God would put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right in the middle of the garden. And I'll tell you why, because God's love language is obedience. Amen? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I also see another choice there, and that is the choice between obeying God and indulging in sin. And I think that's a choice that we're all familiar with. Adam and Eve did not learn to wait on the promises of God, and therefore there was sin, punishment, and the first prophecy directly from God in the coming of the Messiah, the anointed one who would remove the sins of the world. He said, Eve, your offspring and the serpent's offspring are going to be mortal enemies. Through Adam, all are born under the law with deceitful hearts and a desire for carnal things. And that's when the struggle became real. Amen. Amen. But it's a good thing that God is a God of the struggler. Can I get an amen? Anyone in here ever had a struggle, amen? (laughs) Praise the Lord. And to be honest with you, I could tell you a whole lot more. I could could dwell in that area. To be honest with you, I've been in that, 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 that setting of the Garden of Eden in Genesis for about four months. And uh, I could tell you a whole lot more, but we're going to move on. I believe that Adam and Eve did not wait upon the will of God, and I believe that Eve and then Adam sinned against the human race. Psalms 51 and 1 through 5, it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. There's one thing that that God's not going to do. He's not going to blot out a transgression that you don't confess to. And he's not going to hide his face from a sin that you have not confessed to. 
We all have sinned, and we all need to confess to God. Can I get an amen? For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in the sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We were born into sin. We were shaped into iniquity. We have a nature, the law of sin that's down on the inside of us, tempting us always to fall into sin. Romans 5 and 12, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. So cast out of the Garden of Eden and out of the will of God, Adam knew Eve, his wife. And I read about one conception and two births. Cain is born, and a happy first-time mother proclaims, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Now, I know there's a lot of mothers here, and I have this saying that women gain their superpowers when they become mothers. But how many mothers have held up their child, son or daughter, said, wow, thank you, Lord, this is my child. But there seems to be a dark side of Eve since her sin and beguilement, and the mother of all living seems to invest her motherhood into one child. It says, and then again she bore Abel, which there was no special proclamation. Abel itself means breath or vapor, vanity, meaningless, emptiness. Something that is here today and that will soon pass away. And maybe Abel was born blemished or premature. Maybe Abel was born sickly or undesirable. I don't know. But when Abel was born, he was born under the shadow of his brother who had all the focus of the family. You see, the first family on earth was a dysfunctional family. Can I get an amen? You ever feel dysfunctional? You ever try to go through life and it just works against you? Amen. That's just life. We're going to have to muscle through it. Amen. I imagine Cain was a boy that his mother and father could be proud of. He was strong. He knew his dad had to till the ground. So quickly he became a tiller of the ground. And I'm reading between the lines here a little bit, and that's all right. Cain, you make your mother and father proud, but Abel seemed to be unloved. Thank you, Jesus. Abel didn't seem to be the favorite. Abel didn't follow in his daddy's footsteps. Eve didn't show Abel any special attention that I could find. And I'll tell you what, the love of a mother is very important. And the lack of motherly love just seems unnatural and evil. And Abel was just Cain's little brother, Cain's little shadow. Cain, why don't you go take care of your brother? Psalms 27 and 10, when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Amen. He sees our affliction. He sees our sorrows. And Abel remembered the legend of how God slain a lamb and covered the nakedness and sin of his family. You know, I want to thank God right now for, for the shedding of blood and for his sacrifice on the cross because What would we do without the remission of sins? Amen. You know, we could say, God, I'm sorry all day long. We could say, God, forgive me all day long. But there's still a price that needs to be paid. And we need the shedding of blood for remission of sins. Psalms 34 and 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be a contrite spirit. And Abel offered a blood sacrifice. And Abel may not have been special in the eyes of everyone around him, but God is the God of the broken. And God is the God of the unloved and the forgotten. I'm going to say that again. God is the God of the unloved and the forgotten. Abel was accepted by the Lord, and there was a spirit of adoption. And that's the title of this message today, The Spirit of Adoption. Abel had a blood relationship with God, as do those of us today baptized in the name of Jesus. 
When Abel shed the blood of the lamb, it spoke to God. God was inclined to listen and to speak with Abel. He was adopted by the Lord, and when Abel was slain, there was such a connection to God that his blood wept from the ground that it was spilt upon. And God heard. I'm talking about adoption. I'm talking about a connection. I'm talking about a moment in Abel's life where he no longer had lips to move. He no longer had a brain to process thoughts. But there was a blood relationship. And Abel's blood cried out to God. Amen. There's connections. There's connections in the spirit realm that you can't get besides doing things the way God has ordained through his word. You know, I was thinking about it today. I read Psalms 119 today, and it's, it's all about David, how much he loves the word of God and how much he loves the law and loves the precepts of God. And I thought, man, I want to I love the law like David loved the law, and I want to love his precepts and his testimonies as much as David. And God brought it to my attention that David had the law. He had the Torah. But look what we have. We've got the whole Bible, 66 books. Amen. I want to encourage you. If you haven't read your whole Bible, you've got about 11 days to finish it before the year is ended. But I love God's word. I love God's word. And you can't be saved without God's word. You're not even going to know what to do without God's word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I I find another story in the Bible with Rachel and Leah. How many are familiar with the story of Rachel and Leah? There was Rachel and Leah, and Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Young ladies, that means she was popular. Rachel was the type of girl that could turn every head. She was blessed. She was beautiful from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. She She was whipped with a pretty stick, you know. But uh, Rachel had no problems with relationships. She kissed on the first date and was the prized daughter of Laban. But Leah needed a little help from her daddy to get married. Leah, um, we don't know what she looked like, but Laban couldn't give her away. (laughs) Laban couldn't give her away. And you know what? I won't go into that. (laughs) I'm going to be careful here, amen? But Leah needed a little help from her daddy to get married, and and daddy couldn't give her away, so Laban had to fool Jacob into marrying Leah. It's an interesting story. If you don't know the story, the story of Jacob is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and if you haven't read it, you need to read it. And I won't go into a lot of things because we don't have time, but... uh, Laban had to fool Jacob into marrying Leah. She was the oldest, and, and by their custom, and I don't know, something smells fishy there, she needed to be given away first. All right? So it was a good thing that, that Daddy loved Leah, you know? A father's love is important. Amen? We don't know why Jacob didn't notice he was marrying Leah. You know, some people say that he was drunk, Other people say it it was too dark, she wore a bell. We just don't know why. The Bible doesn't say. But I personally believe when God's plan is in motion, there's little you could do to refute it. We all know that. Us older ones, we've been knocked around by life. We've gotten to the ring and we've just been knocked out. You know, you wake up one day and you say, this is my life. (laughs) Praise God. And you younger kids and, you know, people that are young teenagers that are going to school and stuff, you think you're going to just map out your life and be diligent about everything. But I want to tell you, life's going to slap you upside the head and say, here I am. What now? (laughs) Amen, amen. But, uh, you know, life never turns out the way that you expect it to. How many of us feel like life just said, aha, I got you? Don't get me wrong, I love my life, I'm so thankful. But uh, you could spend all your time complaining about what God gave you, or you could try to find the blessing in everything. Because <laughs> here's a little secret, here's a little secret. 
there is a blessing hidden in everything. There's a blessing hidden in everything. And if you could just not focus on the problems, the emotions, the pain, the hurt, and you can just find out what God would do in that situation, you will find a blessing in every situation. That one's for free. We won't take up an offering. <laughs> we probably should, though. All right. The fact is, is that people feel like they were tricked into thinking they were marrying one person, and then after the honeymoon, surprise, you've got dirty socks on the floor, white spots on the mirror. Maybe there's a little weight gain, a bad attitude. I thought you could cook. I thought you could clean. I thought you loved me. But you know what? <laughs> you signed on that dotted line, <laughs> and that's your life, so you better make the best of it can I get an amen? Amen. So Jacob works seven years to marry Rachel, and upon the wedding day, it's Leah. All right? He's duped. He's duped. You know, but uh, I'll say this too, man. You need to be thankful for the wife that God gave you. He brought you two together. You know, the Bible says what God has brought together, let no man separate. Let no man separate. You could spend your time dreaming about how your life could be better this way or that way, but I'll tell you right now, the Holy Ghost tell, told me earlier that you need to find a way to love your wife like Christ loves an imperfect church. Can I get an amen from the men, from the women? Amen. God has brought us together. Genesis 29 and 30 through 35, and he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet another seven years. So 14 years he served. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, she called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction now, therefore, my husband will love me. And she conceived again, bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Now this time my husband will be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing for a while. In the desire to be loved, Leah names three sons according to her affliction. Reuben was see me, as she was the wife that seemed invisible to Jacob. And Simeon was hear me. Because Jacob never really made time to talk with Leah. And Levi was feel me because she was the wife that needed to be touched with affection. And I'll tell you this, I thank God for affliction. And I'm not just saying that. I thank God for affliction. And I thank God for the things that leave a hole in us and turn us towards him. Because we conceive things in God when we hurt, when there's pain. We give birth to the will of God under affliction. We give birth to the will of God under affliction. You ever wonder why the Israelites were under so much affliction next to Egypt? When they lived in Goshen, it was because God wanted a separated line between his people and the world. And you ever wonder why the church was so afflicted in Rome? You, you have a place where every religion is okay, except for all of a sudden Christianity. We're going to ban that one. And they were persecuted because God didn't want the church filled with the beliefs of the world. I'm telling you, if you have affliction in your life, God is doing something good. My God, my God. 
And when we are afflicted, life doesn't seem to suit our need. We give birth to Judah, and we praise God anyway. Amen. You ever done that? Just praise God anyway? Don't withhold from God. He deserves it all. Amen. Now, Rachel was barren, and a lot of things in your life are going to be barren when you walk in the flesh, when you do things in the carnal realm. But Rachel wasn't happy with that, and she turned to Jacob one day, and she said, Give me children lest I die. <laughs> Women, you ever came at your husband that way? I want this. And the husband, you're saying, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't help you. I'm sorry. But you know what? <laughs> you're going to listen to it anyway, man. But I'll tell you what, we don't realize sometimes, you know, when somebody is unhappy or there is unhappiness in our life or there is depression and maybe God is calling you into his courts. Maybe he's trying to get you to the point to where you're actually going to seek him for something. Can I get an amen? We don't realize how much entrance we have unto the almighty God. And I thank his name for that. Amen. And sometimes we miss the blessing because we're only looking in the carnal realm. What do I do? Google. <laughs> or, or sometimes people, hey, you know, I heard this and this and that and that and that. <laughs> Get on your knees and pray, amen. We got any prayer warriors up in this house? <laughs> I'm telling you, you're not going to reach anything without prayer. You're not going to make it without prayer. You're just not. I'll tell you that. But I'm a firm believer in prayer. I love prayer. Got to learn to pray. But amazing things happen, and all of us have testimonies of, of the way God has answered our prayers. And I'll also say this, you know, you got these two ladies in the Bible, and they're trying to reproduce, and they're trying to grow. And I want to tell you the first blessing that God put upon man and all living things is to be fruitful and multiply. Most of the church growth is going to come within. So if God's got a blessing for you, remember he'll always provide. But there are just some times you have to leave it in the hands of God. You don't have power over it. You, know, you just got to leave some things in the lap of God, and he'll always do you right. Amen. So Rachel gives birth to Joseph, and after many years of the story, Rachel dies, giving birth to Benjamin. Like I said, it's a wonderful story. Got to read it. Rachel was buried in Bethlehem, and finally, Leah no longer had to compete for the attention nor the affection of her husband. We all know that Christ was to be born through the bloodline of Rachel's son, Joseph, and then Ephraim, but God refused the tabernacle of Joseph. And chose not the tribe of Ephraim. Jesus Christ came through the blessing and the bloodline of Judah. From the very affliction and desperation from the life of Leah. Can I have the musicians come up? I'm, I'm a really short-winded preacher. I used to be the shortest-winded preacher in the West until Brother Bay started dismissing right after announcements. And, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if you're a guest here, come back. We, we love you, and we want you to be a part of us, and uh, this is truly an amazing church, and uh, God's doing great things, and I'm so thankful for it. Spirit of adoption. Spirit of adoption. Where we cry, Abba, Father. Now, an interesting thing about that word Abba, it's Aramaic. And there's a lot of debate going about what it really means. But I did find this, that if you were not a Jew, if you were a slave or a Nephilim, you weren't allowed to address the head of the household as father. That was saved for the children. That was saved for those who were part of the family, those who may have been adopted. Mark 14 and 36, and he said, Abba, Father, 
all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Can I have everyone stand, please? To be completely transparent this evening, I want to say that there is a Cain and there is an Abel inside of every man in this building. And which one lives and which one dies is completely up to you. And there is a Rachel and a Leah inside of every woman. And God is not turned away by brokenness. God is not turned away by incompleteness. The more messed up your life is, the more interested God is and making you whole. We're talking about a God that's been desiring you for quite a while now. I'm talking about a God that's been watching you since your conception. I'm talking about a God that's wanted you since the foundations of heaven and earth. Have you ever asked yourself why Adam and Eve just didn't walk over to the tree of life? And say, I'm not even playing this game. I'm not even dealing with that over there. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take the tree of life. I'm not going to worry about everything else. But I want to ask you today if there was an antidote. If there was a way that you could reverse everything. If there was a way that you could partake of life, would you partake of it? John 6 and 35, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me will no wise, I will no wise cast out. Revelation 21 and 6, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He's not charging. He's going to give it to you freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I want to open these altars tonight. I love the Lord. And I'm thankful for the spirit of adoption. There's no way that you will make heaven unless you go through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. We're talking about being one. We're talking about an adoption in the Spirit. I thank you, Jesus.